the Mongols. It matters because the Mongols were a pastoral people who swept out of the Gobi in the early 13th century to seize control over much of the known world. Their empire included creating a new Chinese dynasty at the time of the Mongol invasion, art and literature in China were in the middle of a golden age. Background. The formation of the Mongol Empire was a turning point in world history. Due largely to their military prowess, the Mongols rose to power in Asia with stunning speed. The Mongols were a pastoral people from the region of modern-day Mongolia who were organized loosely into clans. Temujin was born during the 1160s and gradually unified the Mongols. In 1206, he was elected Genghis Khan, or strong ruler, at a massive meeting somewhere in the Gobi. From that time on, he devoted himself to conquest. The army that Genghis Khan unleashed on the world was not unusually large. It totaled fewer than 130,000 in 1227. It was the Mongols' military tactics, which were devastatingly effective, that allowed them to invade and conquer so many foreign lands. Mongol armies were almost entirely made up of archers mounted on horseback. Their ability to move quickly around a battlefield set them apart from their enemies. The impact of the Mongolian invasions was felt across most of Asia and much of Europe, where their conquests resulted in the largest land empire in history. To rule the new Mongol Empire, Genghis Khan set up a capital city at Korakorum. Mongol armies traveled both to the west and to the east. Some went as far as Central Europe. After the death of Genghis Khan in 1227, the empire began to change. Following Mongol custom, upon the death of the ruling Khan, his heirs divided the territory. The once united empire of Genghis Khan was split into several separate territories called Khanates, each under the rule of one of his sons. It may be that only the death of Genghis Khan kept the Mongols from attacking Western Europe. In 1231, the Mongols attacked Persia and defeated the Abbasids at Baghdad in 1258. The weakness of the Abbasid Caliphate allowed the Mongols to conquer much of the Southwest Asia. With Baghdad conquered, the Caliphate lost any real authority and the center of Islamic power shifted to the Mamluk dynasty based in Cairo, Egypt. The Caliph would exist only as a figurehead until the early 1500s. Mongol invasions also paved the way for the future Islamic Ottoman Safafid and Mughal dynasties. Mongol forces attacked the Song dynasty in the 1260s. In their attack on the Chinese, the Mongols encountered the use of gunpowder and the fire lance. These inventions came too late to save China from the Mongols, however. By the early 14th century, foreigners employed by the Mongol rulers of China had introduced the use of gunpowder and firearms into Europe. These technologies had a major impact on Europe. In 1279, one of Genghis Khan's grandsons, named Kublai Khan, completed the conquest of the Song and set up a new Chinese dynasty, the Yuan. The effects of the Mongol invasion of China were seen far and wide. Kublai Khan, who ruled China until his death in 1294, established his capital at Khanbalik, the city of the Khan, later known by the Chinese name Beijing. Under the leadership of the talented Kublai Khan, the Yuan, or Mongol dynasty, continued to expand the empire. Mongol armies advanced into Vietnam, and Mongol fleets were launched against Java and Sumatra, and twice against the islands of Japan. Only parts of Vietnam were conquered, however, and then only for a while. The other campaigns failed. On one occasion, a massive storm struck, destroyed the Mongol fleet that attacked Japan, killing thousands. The Mongols had more success in ruling China.
Mongol rulers adapted to the Chinese political system and made use of Chinese bureaucrats. Culturally, the Mongols were quite different from the Chinese and became a separate class with their own laws. The Mongol invasions of China resulted in profound changes. The Mongols overthrew the Song dynasty, leaving China ruled by a foreign power for the first time ever. While Mongols adapted to the Chinese political system, they ended the civil service exams. Mongols and Chinese lived by different laws. The Mongols welcomed merchants into court and trade flourished. Over time, the Mongol dynasty won the support of many Chinese people. Some came to respect the stability and prosperity that by the Mongols brought. By bringing the entire Eurasian landmass under a single rule, the Mongol increased trade, especially along the Silk Road. This new trade had a major impact on Europe. The capital at Kambalik was a magnificent city, and foreign visitors, such as Marco Polo, were impressed by its splendor. An effect of these foreign visits was to generate new interest in trade between Europe and China. The interest eventually contributed to the discovery of the Americas. The Mongol dynasty eventually fell victim to the same problems that had plagued other dynasties. Too much spending on foreign conquests, corruption at court, and growing internal instability. In 1368, uh, the son of a peasant put together an army, ended the Mongol dynasty, and set up the Ming dynasty. Analyzing primary sources. Who were the Mongols? When news of the Mongol conquests in Asia reached Europe, emissaries traveled to Mongol territories to learn about them. The historian Matthew Paris, relying on a mixture of facts and embellishments, painted an alarming picture. Marco Polo, writing about his travels, offered a different perspective. Special ambassadors reported that a monstrous race of men had taken possession of the extensive, rich lands of the East. If the Saracens themselves could not withstand the attacks of such people, nothing remained to prevent them from devastating the countries of the West. Regarding their cruelty, they can be in infamy great enough. The Tartars fed upon their victims, carcasses, and left nothing but the bones for the vultures. Matthew Paris, quoted in Storm from the East. Their style of conversation is courteous. They have an air of good breeding and eat their victuals with particular cleanliness. To their parents, they show the utmost reverence to the order of all ranks of people when they present themselves before his majesty ought not to pass unnoticed. When they approach him, they show their respect by assuming a humble, placid, and quiet demeanor. Marco Polo, quoted in Genghis Khan and Mongol rule. DBQ Analyzing Historical Documents 1. Drawing Conclusions What effect could Matthew Paris's description of Mongols have had on Europeans? 2. Contrasting In what way does Marco Polo's description add a dimension to the Mongols that is missing from Paris's description?